Hey y'all, it's Ashley, and in today's video, we are talking about the Masters. Now, I want to do, I wanted to do a video where I'm leaning more into art history than my other videos, just because I love art history, and I love learning about it, and I miss learning about it. And so, I decided to work on, you know, learning more and maybe doing some fun studies. And so that's what this video is, is I'm working through some of John Constable's paintings I found on this website called smartarthistory.org. And I'm working through some, um, some studies of some of the um, detail shots from some of his paintings. Now, I found this quote by John Constable that I really, really love. And it's about to pop up on the screen, but it says that Constable believed that an artist could encourage positive and negative emotions in the viewer through the dissection of nature, particularly <laughs> through the play of light and dark on the landscape and skyscape. So basically, he is using the values in a piece to bring emotion to a painting or anything that he's working on. And I, I really resonate with that a lot because as someone who loves nature and I'm always trying to bring emotion through my paintings. This was, um, I did it in my senior show. You can pause this to read it or um, anything like that. It goes on for a little bit, but it's just one of the things that I really resonate as an artist myself. And so I just find it really cool that one of my favorite artists, Impressionism artist, um, thought this too. Um, he's also in the Romanticism era as well. Um, but yes, I really recommend smartarthistory.org because you really learn a lot. And uh, it was really cool to look through it. This isn't sponsored or anything. I just found it through Pinterest and thought I'd give it a go. But anyway, so I'm just writing down the quote here because I just, I thought it was really cool. And so anyways, I'm using my watercolors, I can see on the right, to do some values, or not value studies, but I'm just doing some fun little studies of these paintings. And I would say they're not perfect. They're just like a nice, loose, and fun way to paint. And I am painting this, as you can see on my computer, it's 8.30 p.m. And so that's why it's a little darker and a little moodier. I'm trying to play with that. But anyways, I'm looking up at the screen on my computer, and I'm looking down in my sketchbook. And I'm really trying to get the values right. So like the darks and the lights and things like that. And it is pretty hard sometimes. And, you know, practice makes perfect, y'all. That's really all I got to say. Um, so anyways, I'm just mixing these colors here. And um, doing. I'm working on the sky right now. And that's, that's really difficult. Um, if you're going to work on a sky, I really recommend using, if you're going to use watercolors, you should use like a watercolor pencil to outline the different parts of the cloud. Um, because I really messed up. But that is, that's just a fun thing about art is that, you know, you're learning each piece that you do, you're learning. And um, I find that really cool. And really encouraging as well, because you're only getting better as time goes on. So you could say that Constable is one of my favorite artists. But I also really love Van Gogh and Moet. Um, those are some of my other favorite landscape artists, as well as Thomas Cole. Now, I just really love his art as well. Um, I think it's called the Onyx Bow. 
um, where you can see like the storm coming in and it's just absolutely amazing. So anytime you can go to a museum of any sort to see it, I really... Now this little detail shot of these birds is so cute and I just couldn't help but paint it as well. And so that is what I'm doing here. And I probably could have put on um, some masking fluid to cover these birds and just paint the whole thing and then take off the masking fluid and have the birds white. But, you know, it was later at night, as you can tell by my computer. And I kind of just went for it. And since it is a little darker out and have my light on, you can see the reflection on the paint that I'm putting down here, as you can tell. And so it's not the best angle, and I apologize for that. But at the end, you'll, I'll do a little swipe through of um, the paintings that I worked on, so don't worry about that. But I do end up doing three... I think four, four paintings, I believe, um, on this sketchbook page. And it was just so much fun. Um, I just did it very loosely. I think this piece of the birds is the most detailed one. I'm almost certain it's the most detailed. Or actually, no, the one on the right will be the most detailed. Um, cause I work on that the next day, but I really recommend doing this um, painting from the masters just because they they just have so much intel that you can use, and as well as learning about the history behind art is very important. And you know, and you don't need to just take you don't need to take an art class to understand art. Um, I saw somewhere I was doing a little research about art history and how to learn it and things like that and um art prov prov art prov they um it was a website that i found they're also on youtube but um anyways they they i read a little bit it was either from a youtube video or online but they said that one of the easiest ways to learn about art is to go through and find an artist that you really love and then learn about it and ask questions like you know what inspired them you know answer these questions you know how, what inspired them and you know and why are they painting in the first place and things like that and that's just one of the easiest ways to learn and um so I did end up I did take art history classes when I was in college, but the sad thing was, was that at my college, they, I don't want to throw shade on my college or anything like that, but they just didn't have, they didn't appreciate, they appreciated the arts, but it wasn't, we didn't have lots of art history classes, and so... I could only take what they had and being the artist that I am and the overachiever that I am, I wanted, I took all the art, art history classes because I just love art history and I really, if, if I wanted to, I could have gone back and um, got masters and um, studied more art history. But once you're in school for six years, it's just not. You just want to be done. <laughs> and so I was done. But what was I getting with this? I, so I did learn a lot in those art history classes, but there was times when I didn't learn anything because I was busy worrying about other stuff. And so, um, so learning art history on your own is, is good as well. Um, I recommend both ways, like, you know, learning on your own and taking a class. It just depends on what you're doing. If you went to college for art, you probably will have to take art history. But I also have lots of tips on how to study for your tests and things. And so if any of y'all 
are in art school or taking art classes and stuff like that, you can comment down below and I can give, I'll make a video on tips and tricks that um, really helped me in my art classes because when I was in high school, when I was in high school, I, it was very hard for me to study and um, I didn't really know how to study and so my grades weren't that good. But you could probably tell what grade, what grades were good and that was an art class. But anyways, um, I got off on a tangent. But now I am working back, I think I'm working back on the clouds or on the other piece. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Um, it's getting quite late and I think I'm about to call it quits for the day. But as I was saying, you can just obviously learn art history from the internet and that's just one of the best resources that you have. Now let's take a little break and if you would like to like and subscribe that would be amazing and maybe comment below it would be fun so now it's the next day and i'm working on one more study now um i think this was my favorite because it was probably the most it's the most detailed and um and i'm i'm someone who really loves doing realism and getting those details in and um, so this was this was a favorite, definitely was a favorite. And I do want to say, excuse the messy desk. Those water bottles I actually used recently to water my plants, so they are not there anymore. But um, yeah, this is what happens when you're. I think everyone comes across that to where they just have water bottles everywhere. Okay, so back to the art. So I just did a nice little outline um, because I didn't do that with the clouds and I felt like they were a little, they needed to be a little more pizzazzed. Now, I don't know why, but I zoomed in my, com my computer, <laughs> my camera here, and so my hand is in the way a little bit. And I apologize. Um, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And... Some of the techniques I'm using is I'm not doing a bright, bright blue for the background of this one. I am adding some blue in it, into it, but it's going to be like this gray blue for the sky. And um, I'm really having fun um, mixing the right colors for this piece. And um, yeah, and when you're working on something like this with so much pigment and water, you want to let it dry before you go into certain spots just because it will bleed and so if you don't want that then to make sure to let it dry or or I have seen people use like hair dryers or even special or specially used um, like dryers for art or things like that I've seen but anyways, I, I usually just like to wait for it to dry. Like I'll play on my phone or social media and stuff like that. Or take little pictures for um, my Instagram and things like that. I like doing that. It's fun. Um, but anyways, I just wrote down the title of it. The painting I'm doing. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just going for it. And... Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, Ashley. Um, yeah, I've sped it up a bit. And so some of it you can tell it's real time and some of it you can't. Or you can tell it's not. Because I don't think I can paint this fast. But yeah, I'm just working in and I'm making sure my values are correct. That's very important in any painting that you're doing. You just want to make sure that your your lights and darks are correct and that they look... When, when I mean when they look correct, I mean 
that the darks are where they should be, like in shadow spots, 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 in shadow spots, spots, in shadow spots, and the lights are in like the white spots. So you can tell like, oh, there's a tree here, or, or oh, this makes a shadow, um, or things like that. Because um, if it's not, it's just going to look weird. And you don't want that. Um, or your piece doesn't have any shadow or anything in it. And that's okay too. Just as long as you understand where the lights and darks are. That's just important. Oh, that green color is so pretty. Oh, and so this palette I'm using is one that I created. Um, there is a video out somewhere. I will link it up below or up on the iCard of, um, I'll do the watercolor one and I'll talk a little bit about what's in this palette. But if y'all want me to do a video about all my palettes, let me know because um, I do have quite a lot. So I haven't said this before, but if you want to check out in the description box and check out my shop and website, that'll be amazing. I have some prints on there and you can check out the About Me page. Alright y'all, I just want to thank y'all for watching and leave a comment below on your favorite artist and um, yeah, your favorite artist that you just love to take inspiration from. That will be great. And I hope y'all I hope y'all have a great weekend. Um, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and leave a comment about your favorite artist or what you want to see from me. That would be great. Anyways, bye y'all. Thank you so much for watching.